Shalom, shalom, Shabbat shalom. Shalom, shalom, Shabbat shalom. Welcome to the Yahweh and Yeshua Speak television show. This is the Hebrew Husband and Wife Ministry. We are broadcasting from Evanston, Illinois. And uh, let's start out at 1 Corinthians, the 14th chapter. 1 Corinthians, the 14th chapter. The uh, title of the sermon uh, today is Going Through the Wilderness into the Promised Land. Going through the wilderness into the promised land. 1 Corinthians, the 14th chapter. So the Most High, El Elyon in Hebrew, promises entrance into the promised land. Two promised lands. There's yes. one on earth and there's one which is uh, in heaven right now, but it's going to come down to the earth. Go to 1 Corinthians, the 14th chapter. And what we're going to find out in this sermon is that he has ordained a procedure whereby we go through the wilderness to enter into the promised land. 1 Corinthians, the 14th chapter. And we want to read verse 40. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians Hallelujah. chapter 14. Praise him. And verse 40 reads. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 40. Let all things be done decently and in order. So this is uh, El Elyon, the Most High. This is the way he does things. <coughs> Excuse me. He believes in routines, he believes yes. in systems, he believes in cycles, he's got everything, he believes in seasons, and he's got everything <clears throat> set up yes. decently and in order. Hallelujah. And that's why he said, let his will be done on earth as it is in heaven, because yes. he wants the earth to get back to being in order. Yes. So he said, let all things be done decently uh -huh. and in order. Decent. And he has to teach us and train us and, and show us and tell us what decently and in order is. Go to John, the 14th chapter. John, the 14th chapter. Or Yachanan, chapter 14. Now, run, run, just like the daddy told you to. John, chapter Hallelujah. 14. We're going to find out in, in Yachanan, or John, that El Elyon, or the Most High, is decently and in order is hearing and doing what he said. Yeah. Yeah. Not just, not just hearing, it's hearing and doing. Yeah. He calls that decently and in order. We hear John see. chapter 14, and we want to read Hallelujah. verses 21 to 24. Hallelujah. John, or Yachanan, chapter 14, Praise and Praise verses 21 to 24. Reads. John chapter 14 and verse 21. He that hath my commandments and keep them, keepeth them. He it is that loveth me. Yes. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. Oh, yeah. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Bless the mighty Yah, bless El Elyon for his word. Oh, yeah. It says, He that hath my mishvah and shamar them. So it's not just me knowing them, it's not just me having them, it's not just me reading them. Tell he said, uh, and know. keep them. That's right. He, she, it is that a have me. Yep. And he that a have me shall be a have of my Abba. And I will a have him and will manifest, show myself, become known yeah. to, to him. Yes. One of the sheep that he knows, yes. and one of the sheep that knows him. He said that by the same token, if you keep my commandments, you love me. If you don't keep them, then you hate me. That's right. God says Yahweh. He said it. Yeah. So we can hear people saying all this stuff about how they I they know, love right? uh, I know, right? El Elyon, but. Um, he said this is his love language. Mm. Right in the world talking about a love language to where people respond to different things, words or gifts or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, Yahweh's love language is do what I said. 
that demonstrates to him that you love him. Hallelujah. All right, verse 22. Verse 22. Judas said unto him, not Iscariot, Master, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Mm. Verse 23, Yeshua answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our goal with him. Yes. It's his great and holy name, the Yehuda. And then uh, the writer want to be sure, yeah. and I want to be sure, no, I'm not the traitor. <laughs> right. Say, Yehuda, Amar unto him, not Iscariot, uh, Adam, how is it that thou wilt manifest or show yourself or come into relationship or we're going to get close to yes. each other? Yes, yes. And not into the world. Uh, I know, right? So he's talking about two different kind of people, yeah. not into the world, so Ooh. everybody doesn't get close to Yahweh and Yeshua. But it depends on them. Yep, yep. They can they can spout out of their mouth how much they love them all they huh. want. I know. They already right. gave us a test. Yeah. And so we know what the test is, how to pass it, and then we also know when people are flunking the test. Yeah, right. Uh Yeshua, Amar said to him, and Amar to him, uh, if a man uh, uh, Adam uh, have me, uh -huh. he will shamar my dabarim. Yep. He's saying it again, but in a, in a little different way. Right, right. And my Abba will have him. He said, okay, well, and he, if you keep the commandments, he said, that's the same as keeping my word. All right. He said, not only am I going to love you, but the uh, Father's going to love you. I know, right? And we'll come unto him and make our abode with him. Yep. We, we're going to be fast buddies yes. for life. We're, we're going to be friends for life. Yes. We're going to be family. Alright, verse 24. Verse 24. He that loveth me not. Oh, verse 24. He that loveth me not keepeth my sayings. Uh uh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Slow it down. Okay. Let's see, that's because you're obedient. Okay. <laughs> that's why. Let's, Ver let's read it for the other side. Okay. Verse 24. He that loveth me not, keepeth not my saints. There you go. And the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. So he's saying, uh -huh. I'm the spokesperson now, but me and my daddy think the same. And we right. think the same as, as the daddy and, and yep. our big brother too. He that I have me not, keepeth not my sayings. So we can say anything with our mouth, mm -hmm. but our actions really tell the tale. This is this is what right. uh, El Elion is telling us. Right, right. And Hadabar, which he shamar, is not mine, right, said, right. but Ha'abas, which sent me. That's right. So El Elion promised entrance into two promised lands. One, the earthly Canaan promised land, uh -huh. and two, his kingdom eternity promised land. Hallelujah. Go to Deuteronomy the eleventh chapter. But this, these promises are made to people who hear and do. All right. What he said. Deuteronomy the eleventh chapter. You can enter Hallelujah. into two promised land. Yes, thank you. You're, you're going through the wilderness into uh -huh. the promised land. And what uh, the El El Young is going to show us that there are people who get stuck in the wilderness. Uh -huh. And uh, they don't make it yeah. to the earthly promised land or the eternal, the eternity promised land. That's like it is, Rob, so we can Deuteronomy, know. Deuteronomy, the 11th chapter, we want to read verse 21. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 11 and verse 21. Read. Praise Deuteronomy chapter 11 and verse 21. That your days may be multiplied, and the days of your children, yes. and the land which the, in which Yahweh swear unto your fathers to give them, as the days of heaven upon the earth. Hallelujah. So, so this is Hallelujah. what going through the wilderness into the promised land. This is what the the people that hear and do, hear and keep the commandments. Yes. And then 
they're loving on the father, and then, then the father's loving on them back. Yes. Plus the son. You said that your yam may be multiplied. I know, right? And the yam of your band, yes. your children. Hallelujah. So your family gets fallout blessings Hallelujah. from you hearing and doing what totally you done, the yeah. Elion yes. the Most High said. Yes. In the land which Yahweh swear unto your Abba to give them, what uh -huh. we swear to give them? The land on earthly Canaan, the Canaan yep. land, which he, he said is the promised land. Right. And it said, as Hayama Shemayam upon high air, yes. as the days of heaven upon the earth. Yes. So oh, what, yeah. what Yahweh is going to show us in this this, this 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 sermon is that he set up his camps or temples and he uses them to bring people through the wilderness yes. into the promised land. Hallelujah. So he said, your days are supposed to be as the days of heaven on earth. Yes, what a beautiful thing. And what we're going to find out is there are people out here in the wilderness, uh -huh. the enemy's junkie, huh. the enemy's trash pile, yeah. and they're trying to make people believe that they're getting the same amount of benefits as those of us that have huh. the days of heaven on earth huh. that are hearing and doing. We'll see the scripture. Right, right. But there are actually people in that delusion. <laughs> yeah. And 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 lying to themselves. Huh. And then they're trying to pass the lie on. Right, right. But for those of us that are living the days of heaven upon earth we see there's a big difference right right go to psalms the 78 chapter oh yeah but he said when you hear and do he he multiplies your days in other yeah. words you, you live longer yes it, it multiplies the days of your children oh yeah and you're going to be in, in a land that he he promised you to be in yes which is this earthly canaan land and you will be living as the days of heaven know, upon right? the earth. Yes. Suffering lack in no area. Going to Psalm 78 chapter. Not lacking in any area. Praise and him. And never will again. Praise him. Because one thing about it, when you make it to the, the earthly promised land, well, you have the, the, the heavenly, the kingdom promised land, and that's in your back pocket. That's so, right. So you have both. Visa cards. You have both gold oh, yeah. cards. They call them black cards, whatever. Totally, you, Daddy Yahweh. Totally. You. You, you have both of them. Yes. And El Elian has set you up so good. What he does is have you go back and you're get, going back to the wilderness and bringing more people. <laughs> yeah. But you stay in as the days of heaven on earth. Yes. You're always in these two promised lands. Yeah. And you Hallelujah. just. Blessed to be able to go back and bring more people. I know, people. right? It's, it's a cycle. It's a season. Because that's what he's about. Doing things decently and in order. Praise him. Psalm 78, chapter. We want to read verses 40 to 42. Praise right, him. So, El Elyon, the Most High, ordained a routine okay. of using his camps to bring people through the wilderness into the two promised lands. That's right. That's why there's so much pressure coming against being at a temple and attending a temple. In other words, being part of a camp. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's why all this Lone Ranger and all <laughs> this, as as uh, as uh, the man of Yahweh, uh, Ruach has put it in on his mind, talking about homeschooling and, yeah, and, and praise, YouTube my, schooling. That's I why know, all right? this is, is, is coming against. Yes. Being part of the camps. Yes. Why? Because Yahweh is using the camps to bring people through the wilderness into the promised land. Praise him. So unnaturally, the enemy, not <coughs> upset with him, he's just doing what he does. That's right. <laughs> right. And, and so, but but we just want to have some understanding about what he set up the camps for. Yes. And that's all why days. all of this is, is coming against it. Yes. And that's why people having all these delusions uh -huh. about when they don't come to the camps uh -huh. that, hey, it's all good. Right. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, in, in the trash heap of the wilderness. Yep. 
So That's it. El Elion ordained the routine of using his camps to bring people through the wilderness into the promised land. Yes. Psalm 78, verses 40 to 42. Praise Let's on. read it, please. Psalms chapter 78 and verse 40. How <laughs> oft did they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in huh. the desert? Now, here, here's something going on with El Elion and the people. Yep. See, because his goal, his, his cycle, is to bring them through the wilderness yes. into the promised land. Yes. But now here, these people in the wilderness doing some provoking. I know, right? And, and grieving him. The desert, same thing as, as the wilderness. Right, right. Why? Because huh. they got, it, what is they got the, the uh, sunroof top and, <laughs> and, and the gangster lean and, and, you know, and, and they all comfortable right. and they pink Cadillac or yeah. whatever it is that they're doing. Yep. And, and they got all puffed up and, right. and laid God back yeah, and they relaxed right. now in that trash heap in the wilderness. Right. So it says how often, in other words, they did it a I bunch know, of right. times frequently. I know, right. Here's El Elyon, got his camp set up to bring people through the wilderness into the promised land. Uh -huh. But they're provoking him right. in the wilderness. I know, right? Defending the wilderness. Right. Defending the junk heap. Junk heap. <laughs> yup. Got our ears, bro, so we can know. And grieving him. I know. In the desert. Uh huh. He wants better for them than they want for themselves. That's it. They're stretching their neck up, <laughs> telling them how good this smelly junk heap uh -huh. is. All right, grieving him. <laughs> All right, verse 41. Verse 41. Yea, they turned back and tempted uh -huh. Elohim and limited the Holy That's One it. of Israel. That's it. Verse 42. They remember not his uh -huh. hand, nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. Uh -huh. It says, yea, they, they turned back. I know, right? Now, they were in a certain part of the, the, the wilderness. They had gone through a certain part. Right, right. But it said these people backed up from that. They yep. went even further backwards. Yep. So whatever junk heap somebody in the wilderness is, is in, they're going to burrow down deeper into the yeah. junk heap. This, this is what the, the Creator is telling us. Yep. He said, if they did it to him, now you huh. know they're going to do it to you. I know, right? For those of us that are in the camps said they remembered not El Elyon's hand. Right. No, Hayam, when he delivered them I know, right? from the enemy. That's right, in the wilderness. There you go. So, so he, he's, he uses these camps to bring people through the wilderness into yep. the promised land. Yep. So specifically now, he uses the camp to, and let's, let's read where it says, uh, El Elyon uses his camps to, and then you've got some bullet points. Oh, yeah. Uh, tell us. What, what what happens? Why did he set these camps up? Hallelujah. He's got this cycle going on in the earth. This Hallelujah. is just one of his cycles. Right, right. So so what is he using his camps for? And that's why there's so much pressure coming against the camps. Uh -huh. And people deluding themselves thinking that, hey, you know what, I'm not missing anything. Alright, so what, right. what what is he using these camps for? Huh. His camps. Deliver people from physical, mental, and spiritual captivity. That's right. Prove, show, and tell people he is their deliverer. Hallelujah. Tell people what their relationship to him is. Yes. Teach people to overcome their wilderness mindset. Yes. And train people to develop mindsets to enter the promised land, take it over, and live there. So yes. This, this is what happens yes. in the camps. Yes. And, and, and we just read where it said in Psalm 78, they did remember, remember not his hand, know, but they, right? he delivered them from the enemy. Yes, he did. So he's still doing this same cycle yep, yep. and using camps. Yep, always. So, so in El Elyon's camps, people are exposed to what being in the wilderness has done to them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, that, yeah, that's what they yeah. don't really like. Right. They like that delusion. <laughs> that they have going on right. about all where good. they're at and what's going on with right. them. Go to Psalms, the first chapter. Like they all good. But Elion set up the, this system. Yep. It's 
kind of like the, um, what is it, Harriet Tubman, what they call that railroad where they were the Underground slave, Railroad. Underground Railroad. Here we go, right. So El Elian got this Underground Railroad <laughs> in, in uh, the enemy's in the enemy's camp, right. which is the earth. It said in, in the Psalms, yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Right. Well, he's bringing his people through the wilderness, That's right. the earth, which is the valley of the shadow That's of death, death into yeah. the promised land. Yep, yep. But so, what he set the camps up for is to expose the people to, to what being in the wilderness has done to them. That's right. Psalms, Tell that chapter idea, bro. One, we're going to read verse 1, and, and this Hallelujah. is a classic. What being in the wilderness I know, right? has done to them. Huh. Psalms chapter 1 and verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the wickedness, or standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. I know, right? It says, A Barak is how I done that walketh not in the Asa or Yahash yes. of the uh, Ra. Right. Nor stand in the way of Hata'ah, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. So so you got some, some different things happening here. Right. It says the the one that's that's blessed, that's going through the wilderness on the way to the promised land and getting there, that one is 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 blessed. He's not listening to those voices in the wilderness. Right. We're going to find out the wilderness got a, got a howling voice. Yeah. A, a waste howling voice. Yeah. It says when you get when you get counseled by that huh. in the wilderness, you first you 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 kind of hanging out with them. Right. Living with them. Okay, you're spiritually dead. You didn't really know. Oh, okay, y'all all in the book, in the trash heap together. <laughs> right. You, you, you didn't know you are in a trash heap. Right. So, then, okay, you kind of hanging out with them, but now you're standing yes. in their ways. Yeah. Now you're becoming more and more like them. Right. Now, people got so comfortable in the junk heap, now they're sitting down right, right. in the trash heap. It says sitting in the enemy's seat, which is the seat of the scornful. Right. So what does this English word scornful mean? So they've transitioned yes, down, further and further down. Right. They went from hanging around to now they're standing up doing more right. of what the trash heap people are doing. That's it. Now that's they've been right. sitting down in it. Right. Alright, huh. this English word scornful. Let's read that. The English word scornful is the primitive Hebrew word, root word lutz, found at Strong's Exaltive Concordance of the Old and New Testament of the Bible, Hebrew number 3887. Strong's defines scornful as to make mouths act. For example, to scoff, hence, from the effort to pronounce a foreign language, to interpret, to general or generally intercede, um, ambassador, half in derision, interpreter, make a mock, mock or scorn, scorner, scornful, and teacher of scorn. All right, so they, they done graduated. They were just <laughs> hanging out, you know, with the trashy folk at first. Right. Now they're standing up. And, 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 and more comfortable oh, in the trash. Yeah. Now they teach in trash. Yep. A teacher of scorn. I know, right? To mock at. To make mouths at. I know. To scoff. And it says to pronounce a foreign language. Well, the foreign <laughs> language, in other words, the foreign language, the language of the world, yep. as apart from the language right. of the Father in heaven from right. Tel Elion. Tell that is, from bro. Genesis, the first chapter. Just like your daddy told you to. So the earth is the enemy's wilderness. Yep. House. Yep. Genesis, the first chapter. Yeah, yeah we didn't make it like that. Uh huh. Genesis 1, 1, read 1 and 2. Hallelujah. So we can find out how the devil made the earth his, uh, his wilderness house. 
and then he made it into a junkie. Right. And he's still a junkie now. Genesis 1, 1 to 2, please. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, Elohim created the heaven and the earth. Verse 2. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of Elohim moved upon the face of the waters. All right, bless the mighty Yah. And so those that have studied the scripture understand that between verse 1 and 2, the devil made the earth a trash pile. Right, right. Throw it up. In, in ha Bereshit, Elohim bara, ha Shemayim and ha Eret. Yep. He did not make it into a trash pile. No. Nope. He, he didn't make it into a city dump. But now verse 2 it says, and ha Eret, it actually became right. without form and void. Right, right. So he didn't make it all torn up. Right. It said darkness was upon the face of the deep, and ha Ruach of Elohim moved upon ha Mayim, upon the face of Hamayim. Right. So in between verse 1 and 2, the enemy tore up yep. what Tell El Elyon is, created. Uh, so the and know. then at the end of verse 2, here's El Elyon, uh, the Most High, stepping in That's right. and remaking it That's right. nice again. It right. So let's look at this where it says that the earth was without form and void. Huh. So the English word void, let's see what this, this is talking about. So you, so you can understand about the wilderness of the earth that uh -huh. people are in. And that when they come to these camps that Yahweh set up right. to bring them from the wilderness to the promised land, right. then they actually start showing them and then they start smelling the trash around them uh -huh. and, and seeing the trash right, around right. them. All right, the English word oh, yeah. void. What does that mean? The English word void is the Hebrew word bohu, found at strong exalted concordance of the Old and New Testaments of the Bible. Hebrews number 9.22. Uh, uh, Strong's defined it as from an unused root, meaning to be empty, an empty space, superficially an undistinguishable ruin, and emptiness. All right, so yeah. it said the earth became an in undistinguishable ruin right, right. and emptiness. Yeah. El Elyon did not create it like that. The Most High didn't create it like that. The enemy tore it up that so right. it became like that. Uh -huh. But then at the end of verse 2, here he is remaking it That's right. and fixing it back so it, it's nice. Right, right. So did I give you uh, the definition for void? Do you have that? I just wrote Hmm? I just read. Oh, okay. Uh, without form and void. Okay, you just read void. Yes. Okay. So El Elyon uses his camps to bring people out of the wilderness. That's right. Deuteronomy 32. To bring them out of the trash heap. Deuteronomy yeah. 32. So we see that the earth was made into a trash heap. El Elyon replenished it, All right. but then the first man gave it up, <laughs> yeah, gave it right and, back. and the yeah. enemy made it a trash heap again. Yeah. Deuteronomy 32. Hallelujah. Made it a wilderness again. You want to read verse 10. Right. Maria. Maria. Hallelujah. 32. And verse 10, please. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 10. He found him in a desert land and in the waste howling wilderness. He led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of yes. the So this is talking about yes. the Yahweh's people Israel, but it's also representative of humanity. Yeah, yeah. This is where he found every man, woman, yeah, child yeah. in the wilderness. In the wilderness, he found him in a desert land. Yeah. So you know what a desert looks like. <laughs> really, nothing. Nothing, uh, no. nothing living, and every now and then they make it a little rain. You might see a little spring come up or whatever. But he found you and me in a desert land. Yes, he did. And not only that, in a waste. Howling, howling. Yeah, yeah, not yeah. just a wilderness, but a waste howling know, wilderness. Right? Look where, where it's such it's such a city dump. It, it's it's such 
so messed up that it's howling out its emptiness. Yeah, that's right. And then it says, El Elyon led people yeah. about. Yeah. He instructs people. Yeah. And he keeps people as the apple yeah. of his eye. Totally you got it, right. and, and the main one he keeps as the apple of his eye is the people that he's using in these camps oh, yeah. to keep going back and walking people through for, out of the wilderness right, right. into the promised land. Right, right. And that, that's a seasonal, that's a process, and we've gone through this process at this temple, and temples are going through that process yeah, yeah. all the time. Because yeah. new people are coming in, uh -huh. or some people, we're going to find out, some people stay in the wilderness longer than <laughs> other people. And so, but El Elyon already let us know he doesn't want any of them to perish. Right, right. So he keeps sending the people in the camps back to get the people. Hallelujah. To, to walk them through to the promised land. And, and then you go back again to walk. But meanwhile, those of us that are in the camps, we stay in the in the two promised lands. Yeah, yeah. In the, the earthly Canaan land, yeah. promised land, and totally, in yeah, the yeah. eternal promised land. Yes, yes. So that's how we can go back with our badges and keep walking people through. So yeah. it's a process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some people get confused uh -huh. when people come to temples and then they don't stay and then they, you know, leave or uh -huh. they so it's just a cycle. It's the what uh he is doing. He's just walking people from the wilderness to the promised land. There's some that don't want to go. That's right. There's some that do want to go, but he just keeps sending us back. He just keeps the camps going. To, yeah. to bring the people through the process. Totally, Daddy, all right. But now we're reading here, this is where we came from, this is where all people come from. Right, right. That desert land and the waste wilderness. And the enemy made it like that. So let's look at this English word waste. It says, so this is not only a wilderness, empty, but, know, but it's right. a wasted wilderness. Huh. The English word waste. Is the Hebrew word tohu found as strong exalted concordance of the Old and New Testament of the Bible? Hebrews 84 14. Strong defines it as from an unused root meaning to lie waste, desolation of surface, desert, figuratively a worthless thing, in vain, confusion. Empty place without form, nothing, thing of naught, vain, vanity, waste, wilderness, and a place of chaos. A place yep. of chaos. Yep. That's, that's why I had to ask you about that because when we read Genesis 1 1 and 2, without form and void, that's just, this is the same, this word, uh, tohu, without form. Mm. So in other words, a place of chaos. Yeah. So that's what he did in between Genesis verse 1 and 1 and 1 and 2. Made it a place of chaos, a vanity, right. a wasted place, a thing of nothing, an empty place without form. Right. So that's why I had to uh, ask the rock. So it's the same word in Genesis 1 and 2. It's tohu and bohu, without form and void. Yeah. So right. here, it, it, it's also a wasted place and it's a place of chaos. So now it says, not only is that wilderness wasted, but it's howling out. All right. So let's look at what is this English word howling in the Hebrew. What is that talking about? The English word howling is the Hebrew word yell a, found at strong and exalted concordance of the Old and New Testament of the Bible, Hebrews 32, 14. Strong defines it as from Hebrews 32, 13, meaning howl, a howling, a long, loud, sorrowful, sorrowful, filled cry by a an animal caught in a trap causing pain, grief and misfortune to them. This Hebrew word is used once in the Bible in this verse. All right, so here it is, wilderness is it. They howl it in the wilderness. It's a long, loud, sorrow-filled cry yeah. by yeah. people caught in a trap, yeah. causing pain, grief, and misfortune yeah. to them. Yeah. In the trash heap, the devil's trash yeah. heap. That's where El Elyon got us from. 
And that's why it's so important. That's why he uses his camps to keep going back in the wilderness to walk the people out of the wilderness, to bring them out of the wilderness, through right. the wilderness, into the promised land. Because they howling in the wilderness. And they, they got yeah. this imagination going on, don't even know. I know, right? They howling in the wilderness in pain. Go to Job 12th chapter. So when people go through the wilderness, headed to the promised land, the enemy howls out. Uh -huh. Telling them they get more benefits in the wilderness. Uh -huh. By not serving right. El Elyon. Right. Just stay put. Just stay in the wilderness. Uh -huh. That's better. Job the 12th chapter. That's what he howls out. And there are people in the wilderness in the trash. They howling out the same oh, yeah. thing he's howling out. Yep. Why? Because first they started just hanging out there. Then they standing up and, and representing the trash heap. Mm -hmm. Now they sat down in the trash huh. heap. And comfortable in the trash. Yep. Job 12, we want to read verses 24 to 25. Hell yeah. So the enemy howls out, telling people in the wilderness, Oh no, you get more benefits mm -hmm. by being in the wilderness right. than, than serving El Elyon, Job mm -hmm. 12, 24 to 25. Praise Let's him. read it. Job chapter 12 and verse 24. He taketh away the heart of the chief of the people of the earth and cause, causeth them to wander in a wilderness where there is mm -hmm. no light. Verse 25, they grope in the dark uh -huh. without light, and he maketh them to stagger like a drunken yep. man. Yeah, all right, well, yep. that's what we were all staggering around, I know, right? around in the trash. I know, right? He takes away high pain of mine, mm -hmm. the chief of high am of high Eric. Right, right. And causes them to wander in a wilderness where there is no way. Yep. They grope in the dark without oar, and he make it in to stagger like a drunken I know, man. Right? So there's an article I was watching uh, Daystar, excuse me, um, and um, the 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 man's uh, wife. Um, she's got this discussion group, and she had uh, mentioned that she had saw an article. Where uh, they have an, they they had an unbaptizing ceremony at a church hmm. in Texas, and so I went online, and so let's read this unbaptizing hmm. ceremony. So this just illustrates in the junk heap, in the in, yeah. the, in yeah. the trash bin of the earth, yeah. what people do groping and wandering in the wilderness. All right, satanic temple unbaptized. Christians in Texas, uh, the, sat the satanic temple is performing unbaptisms after an upside down cross is drawn huh. on their forehead. They chant, Hail Satan. Huh. The satanic temple of Dallas Fort Worth spent part of the weekend hosting a booth at the second annual Pagan Pride Fest in Tyler, Texas and invited people to leave the, the Christ by going through the unbaptism ceremony. The satanic temple is performing unbaptisms. Independent journalist Ty Taylor Hansen reported on the event and posted a video on Twitter according to the Post Millennium. After an upside down cross is drawn on their forehead, they chant, Hail Satan. According to the to Christians' beliefs, a baptism represents an individual's acceptance of Jesus Christ as one's Lord and Savior who died and was resurrected for the forgiveness of their sins. After the performance of unbaptism at the Satanic Temple, a person could receive a certificate and pr that proves that the act indeed happened if they pay $10. Turn. <laughs> That's the end. So, so mm -hmm. this man is just taking their $10. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, uh, y'all flash, as my brother would say, all they have to do is not keep y'all face commandments. I know, right? 
you don't have to draw no upside down crawl. No. So you, all you have to do is just, all they have to do is just keep doing what they're right. doing. That's it. So he's charging them his ten dollars, yep. but that's just an example of the the waste howling oh, wilderness. Yeah. <laughs> the people yeah, do. Yeah. Well, yeah. Go back to the real numbers of the 11th chapter. Huh? Yeah, you don't have to go through. They don't no. have to go through all that. <laughs> no. Just don't do what El Elion says. Right. <laughs> huh. Yeah. Save your ten dollars. Yeah. <laughs> numbers of the 11th chapter. So the enemy howls that no service and half-hearted service of El Elion. <laughs> it's better. I know, right? Look around. Numbers the eleven chapter. He said, Oh yeah, you're gonna get away just like he told uh, the woman in the <laughs> garden. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Right. You're gonna get away. Nothing's gonna happen. It's gonna work out all right. Mm. He tell he tell people that in the wilderness all the time. Yep. Oh no, just just keep on. Doing what you're doing. Numbers 11 chapter verses 5 to 6. Praise him. He howls at no service and half-hearted right. service. Hey, you're going to get the same benefits. I know, right? It, it's nah, it's, yeah. it's, it's going to work out all right. Yep. So, all right, let us read. So he lied. Uh-huh. Numbers chapter 11 verses 5 to 6. Reads. Numbers chapter 11 and verse 5. We remember the fish which we did eat in Mizraim freely, the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. Verse 6, but now our soul is dry away. There is nothing at all besides this manna before our eyes. So here's huh. what the, our forefathers, children of Israel, are saying. Look here. Huh. We had it so good being slaves I in know. Mizraim. But look, we ain't got nothing but this manna now. But we remember, oh, we had fish and we had some cucumbers and melons and leeks and and we out here in this in the wilderness starving. Right. No, what it was, you you starving in your mind. You starving spiritually. No, no, that is right. So we know. they were rejecting. We just read the scripture about right. how they provoked El Elyon. I know. When right. he's trying to. to Bring them through the wilderness into the promised land. Yep. yep. But they're, they're looking back at the, the good old days and how it was so much better. Right. When they weren't in a camp, mm -hmm. where the camp was bringing them to the promised land. He said, "But hey, our soul dried away. There's nothing <laughs> but this manna. Right. There's nothing being taught but the words that Yahweh told us. Mm. There's nothing being told us but." Uh, do what Yahweh said. There's uh -huh. nothing being told us but please Yahweh. There's nothing being said but, but you know, keep the commandments and, right. and all will turn out well. There's nothing being said but, hey, you, you're in a trash heap. Do you want to stay in the trash heap right. or do you want to get up out of there right. and go that, to the promised right, land? Right, right, right. That's like that that exactly that what they, they're saying. That's it. Like today. Don't you see how nice that the trash heap is that we got? <laughs> Go to Numbers, the 14th chapter. Yeah. Hallelujah. Taking that out of the trash heap. Uh-huh. Now wait to the kingdom. When are you going to say something else besides what the word says? <laughs> I know, right? Hallelujah. Never, because the word is going to last right? forever. Numbers, chapter 14. Let's read verses 3 to 4. Hallelujah. Numbers. Chapter Praise 14. Praise and verses 3 to 4. So this, this is what El Elyon was saying about how often they provoked him. Uh -huh. This is what he was talking about. Numbers 14. This is what people do in the wilderness. Yep. That's why he set up camps to take them through the wilderness to the promised land. Yes. Hallelujah. Numbers chapter 14 and verse 3. And wherefore hath Yahweh brought us in unto this land to fall by the sword that our wives and our children should be a prey. Were it not better for us to return into Mizraim? Now they're saying, El Elyon, he, he lied. Yeah. 
Hey, a uh, matter of fact, it wasn't really him. Mm -hmm. It was these men we're looking at. It was yes. bullshit. <laughs> our own. They, they told us this lie. Yeah. It said, Wherefore hath Yahweh brought us unto this land to fall by the sword that our issue where you weren't in the land? <laughs> You're in the wilderness. You're in the desert. Right. It says that our Isha and our band should be a prey. Wasn't it better for us mm. when we were slaves mm. in Egypt? Right. Uh, no, it wasn't. Nope. Why are you trying to glamorize it now? I know, right? El Elion came to get you out of the junk pile. Told you, Daddy. It ain't his fault you got comfortable in the junk pile. I know, right? And now he's trying to show you you in the junk pile. Right. But you don't want to believe that. Uh-uh. You, you want to just cover it up and act like it's not a junk pile. Uh -huh. Verse 4. Verse 4. And they said one to another, let us make a captain and let us return into Mizraim. All right, so it wasn't just enough to, to talk about it. No, right. So, so then they got to get the YouTube uh -huh. uh, camp. Right. Watching at home, and then they got to get the, the, the home camp with a you know, few here, a few right. there. So they got to set all these alternative ways from what El Elyon right, set right. up so like the camp. Right. So then people stop leaving the wilderness. They just get comfortable in right. the wilderness and don't leave the wilderness to go to the promised land. And they think that's what it's supposed to be. That's like. right. It's just supposed to be a city dump. They just think that's that's how it's supposed to be. And then they look at those of us that are living as days of heaven on earth. Oh, yeah. And then look at us as, as strange. <laughs> when all of us are supposed to be like that. Yeah, yeah. Jeremiah 44. But the whole thing is they're, they're listening to that waste howling wilderness. That voice. Telling them, hey, you know what? It was better when when we didn't have El Elyon. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and they'll uh, quote scriptures to you too. I uh, know, right? You know the uh, the enemy. He twists the scriptures. Yep. Yeah. But he will uh, quote scriptures and apply them to the trash heap. I uh, know. So they try. And and try to to make you think. I uh, know. That is not a trash heap. Huh. Jeremiah 44. Verses 17 to 18. Hallelujah. Jeremiah chapter 44. And Praise let's read verses 17 to 18, please. Jeremiah chapter 44 and verse 17. But we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of your own mouth to burn incense. Wait, out of who? Out of. Let me repeat this again. Mm -hmm. Chapter 44 and verse 17. But we will certainly do whatsoever thing going forth out of our own yep. mouth. Uh, to do. burn uh -huh. incense unto the Queen of Heaven uh -huh. and to pour our drink offerings unto her as we have done, we and our fathers, our kings, and our princes in the city of Jehu. Yehuda, and in the streets of Jerusalem, for then had we plenty of victuals, and were well, and saw no evil. Huh. So now, now huh. here, here is Israel. I know, right? But it's representative of the world. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. In, in the wilderness. That's it. <laughs> that that wilderness mindset. Yeah. He said, here they said, we will certainly, certainly. do, and and. You don't have to say it with your mouth. Uh-uh. Your actions. All the Father has to do is look at you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you love me, you hear and do what I say. That's yeah, right. It don't matter what you say with your mouth. <laughs> no. It is real. All he has to do is look at you. <laughs> we will certainly do whatsoever thing goes out of our own mouth. Right. We said this is not a dump. Uh -huh. We said this will, this is not a trash right. heap. Therefore, we gonna stay in the wilderness. Right. He said to burn incense unto the queen of, of heaven, to pour out drink offerings unto her. In other words, that's just to do whatever you feel like you want right. to do. Yeah. And then let the enemy give you some scriptures <laughs> to delude yourself. Yeah. And think that 
that all is well. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> As we have done. And it said, it's a whole bunch of people doing it. Yes, it is. We, it says our fathers, huh. our kings, people in high places, yep. and our princes in the cities of Yehuda and in the streets of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Now they're saying, yep. this is why they're going to do that. Because huh. they're saying, it was worse huh. before I was coming to the camp. That's it. So they say. It was worse when I was being shown that I was in, I'm in a dump. Yeah. It was worse when I was actually seeing the reality yeah. and I can get up out of it and head for the promised land. He said, for then had we plenty of victuals yeah. and were well and saw no evil. Yeah. So they're saying, since, since I started doing this thing the way Yahweh said it, right. then all kind of stuff ha started happening to me. <laughs> you, you lying to yourself. Yeah. The devil lied to you first. Right. Now you done took the lie and lied to yourself so long, you made yourself cuckoo. Yep. What's the place in Illinois they used to send the cuckoo people? Mantino? Yep. I don't know if that's still open, but it would be full uh -huh. today if it was still open. So they said, before we came to El Elyon and started doing this thing his way, coming to his camps and uh -huh. going through the wilderness, into the promised land. Uh -huh. Well, they never got out of the wilderness because right. they had this mindset. Right. See, be before we had plenty of stuff, uh -huh. we were well and, we yep. and no evil came uh -huh. on us. So they thought. You know somebody's deceived with that. Right. Verse 18. Verse 18. But since we left off to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her, we have wanted uh -huh. all things and have been consumed by the sword and by the fact. Huh. Well, now they're saying, okay, uh, since, since we stopped serving uh, the enemy in the wilderness, right. then all kind of bad stuff has started happening to us. Right. You have lost your I know, right? natural mind. No, you lost your spiritual mind. You oh, lost yeah. your natural mind. Now, since we left off the burning incense to the Queen of Heaven and pour out drink offerings unto her, Forget about El Elyon that got their breath in right, his right. hand. We have wanted all things and have been consumed by the sword and by famine. Uh -huh. Lying to themselves. Uh -huh. Go to Deuteronomy 32. So the wilderness where the enemy wants to keep people in the trash heap. Uh -huh. him, he wants to keep them there. And some people are lying to themselves so much. Now they want to keep themselves there. I uh know, -huh. right? But they're deceived. Yep. This is this uh, uh, sweet sister I was, I was uh, watching when she was saying when uh, the first man and woman uh, opened the door for the devil to be their father. And um, El Elyon came in the garden to, uh, and they, they uh, heard him walking in the garden. Mm -hmm. And then he didn't see him, and then he asked, okay, where, where art thou? Where are you at? Right. Because he wasn't picking him up in the spirit realm anymore. Right. Why? Because they had died right. spiritually. Right. But then he asked the man, okay, where are you at? <laughs> and she said, the, the sweet sister, the good point that the Ruach told her, she, she said, he started lying to him. <laughs> he said, I, I heard your voice, and I knew I was naked. <laughs> And uh, she said, no, that's a lie. You heard him walking. Uh -uh. And the real reason you hid was because you disobeyed. Right. right. So, so she said he started lying, talking the language of his father right then. Right, right. Lying to El Elyon telling him. <laughs> I heard your voice, and, you know, and I hid because I was naked. No, you hid because you did what he told right. you not to do. Right, right. So she said he was lying, started lying that right the there. Uh, for the revelation night. And that's what happens in the wilderness. Yep. Them lies just lie for no reason. Over, oh, just, right, for no reason. <laughs> just lie to be lying. <laughs> now I remember somebody told a lie recently, and then Yahweh um, let me see the truth of it. Right. And then I'm recounting what I saw, and then I could just feel them emotions because. Right. Look, you shouldn't have lied. Right.
But the Ruach said, no, don't, don't, you know, just, just let it go. Right, right. But I know it was a lie. Right. But it's like, hey, Yahweh judge between you and me. All right. I'm not here, but, you know, I don't point in nobody getting on pins and needles when they done told a lie. I know, right. Because, see, Yahweh going to show it. Yep, yep. Now you the judge, we're here to serve Yahweh. That's it. Uh, go to Deuteronomy 32. Oh, yeah. Yep, so so the wilderness is where the enemy wants to keep people in the trash heap. Deuteronomy 32, let's read verses 9 to 10. Praise on. But here's, here's El Elyon Praise now on. calling people out of the wilderness. I know, right? To go through it. Yep. To go, go to his promised it. lands. Yes. Verses 9 to 10. Chapter 32, verses 9 to 10. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 9. For Yahweh's portion is his people. Yaakov is the lot of his inheritance. Hallelujah. Verse 10. He found him in a desert land, and in the waste howling wilderness, he led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of yeah. his eye. All right, so, you, so we read part of this before, All right. but we just want to know who, who Yahweh is talking about. <laughs> And that's why he set up these camps. Right. This cycle. So it can keep repeating itself. And as Ruach said, so if attendance at camps dwindle, and then it goes back up, all it's doing is going through the cycle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some people are coming in, going through the wilderness, right. coming to, to, the, to the promised land. Oh, yeah. And then they're going out and starting their own ministries. And, doing the what yeah. in. and then you have some get stuck in the wilderness uh -huh. and so they just go back to their trash heap because <laughs> because that's what they have decided that's what they like that right but all yahweh does is he's repeating the cycle over and yes. over again because he doesn't want anybody to perish that's so it, we yahweh. just keep going through it at all temples yeah it's not just any one temple uh -huh. that it happens at uh -huh. any camp these are yahweh's camps spiritual camps right right but Yahweh's portion is his people with a lot of his inheritance. So some will start on their journey and be delayed by others I know, they're right? hooked up with. I know, right? Joshua and Caleb took 40 years to go through the cycle. Huh. The wilderness to the promised land because of the people that El Elyon put them with. <laughs>